All right, looks like the room's filling up, so I'm going to go ahead and start get started. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Director of Business Development Dan O'Connor will introduce our speaker for today. In this webinar, Dr. Marcelo Duque, adjunct professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the Federal University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, will present a case example on the use of PVPK modeling and simulations to support the development of an IR tablet formulation and setting more relevant dissolution test specifications. <clears throat> we take your privacy rights seriously. By attending this event or participating in the Q&A session, you are allowing us to contact you for follow-up. You may ask questions via the questions panel on your, <clears throat> on your dashboard at any time. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> if you need assistance, please use the hand raise icon. Daniela Silva, postdoc fellow with Simulations Plus, and Dan O'Connor will be fa facilitating the Q&A today. And I'll pass it over to you, Dan. Thank you very much, Jasmine, and uh, welcome all uh, to this December uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I'd like to welcome and uh, thank Dr. Uh, Duque for uh, joining us today from Sao Paulo, Brazil, where earlier today I learned that it's raining and it's about 26 degrees C. For those of us in the Fahrenheit world, that's about 80 degrees. Um, I'm sitting here in Connecticut where everything is freezing as well as our headquarters in Lancaster, California, where I guess this morning Jasmine said that they had both snow in the mountains and frozen cars. So uh, we, uh, we not only welcome uh, Marcelo to the call today, but we are envious of the warm weather and the rainy weather that he's enjoying down in Brazil. Uh, as Jasmine mentioned, uh, Dr. Duque is a um, professor, Department of uh, Pharmaceutical Sciences at the uh, Federal University of Sao Paulo. He's also spent time, uh, interestingly enough, not only in pharmaceutics, but also in cosmetology. So he has experience in that area of um, PBBK uh, use of tools as well. And today we're going to be hearing about development of uh, immediate release tablet tablet formulations and how that can influence and what it can do for dissolution test specific specifications. So without further ado, if it's my it's my pleasure to introduce Marcelo Duque. Hello. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. I would like to thank you, Simulations Plus for the invitation, for the opportunity to present the work we are uh, doing at the Federal University of Sao Paulo, UNIFESP, Brazil. Uh, we are, this is our building, we are uh, located in the city of Diadema near uh, Sao Paulo. Uh, it's the Institute of Environmental, Chemical and Pharmaceutical Sciences. I am from I'm a professor from the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Laboratory of Pharmaceuticals and Cosmetology. And uh, we will discuss today the use of uh, PBPK modeling and simulation to support the development of an immediate release tablet formulation and setting more relevant solution test uh, specifications. Uh, uh, we will show a case as a case study, uh, Amiodarone IR tablets. Uh, as a background, uh, an introduction, a little introduction to PBPK modeling and simulation. Uh, we uh, are going to talk about what, what's important for drug product formulation and solution. Uh, uh, a little bit about PBBM, our uh, objective and uh, experimental section where we are going to show uh, some results, uh, discussion and conclusion of the, the, the work. So, uh, in our uh, case study, uh, we are going to show the application of PBPK modeling and simulation in the formulation development and setting solution test specifications for Amiodaran IR tablets. 
as a, an introduction, uh, PBPK modeling and simulation, uh, uh, PBPK uh, means physiologically based pharmacokinetic modeling, uh, integrates, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very important tool that integrates uh, physiological information uh, of human or animal uh, with uh, drug characteristics as solubility versus pH, pKa, precipitation, log p, uh, and permeability and other uh, characteristics. Uh, it's used to predict drug distribution to each organ uh, tissue uh, of the body. Uh, you know, PBPK, uh, when you use PBPK, each organ uh, or tissue is defined by its blood flow, uh, arterial blood flow or, uh, and venous uh, blood flow, uh, according to its uh, volume, uh, size, and other characteristics as uh, gender, age, weight, health status, uh, and BMI. Uh, and uh, when we think uh, about what's happening in vivo after the, the oral administration of an immediate release tablet, uh, first, we have the disintegration process where uh, the tablet uh, disintegrates into small particles. Then the dissolution process uh, where the API is dissolved to be absorbed into the enterocytes and to the systemic circulation. Of course, uh, there are many processes involved uh, in this way, as uh, we can see here uh, in the, the big picture. Uh, the gut metabolism, uh, the influence of transporters uh, in flux or, uh, and or if, if flux transporters here in the, the gut wall, uh, and liver metabolism. Uh, but uh, from a formulation uh, perspective, what is important uh, when we are trying to uh, think about the formulation, to develop uh, a formulation? Uh, the API characteristics, uh, excipients that uh, will be used in the formulation, uh, disintegration time, particle size, solution, or uh, all, all this information. Uh, so uh, we feel that uh, each case, uh, you have to study each case. Uh, so uh, in terms of the solution, is your uh, solution method uh, relevant? Uh, it's, it's very important. I see that uh, people uh, use, uh, uh, sometimes solution methods that are not relevant in vivo, and uh, it's um, it makes some something wrong uh, in the simulation. So uh, it's important to know if your uh, solution in vitro solution method is uh, relevant. Um, when when talking about uh, modeling and simulation, uh, modeling simulation can help with formulation scientists in this formulation development process uh, because with modeling and simulation you gain knowledge about uh, what's happening here uh, about in vivo solution it's uh, also possible uh, with uh, this information uh, to know if your solution method is relevant in vivo you can compare uh, solution, in vivo solution with uh, in vitro dissolution. Uh, when we talk about uh, PBPK uh, modeling and simulation, we are um, saying that uh, we have a mechanistic, we are using mechanistic models. Uh, so a mechanistic solution, mechanistic absorption. So we are talking about PBBM, physiologically based biopharmaceuticals modeling. Uh, so uh, PBBM uh, integrates many information, many information uh, 
as gastrointestinal transit time, uh, food affected solution, permeation, uh, metabolism and transporters. Uh, those are forms characteristics uh, and APIs, uh, API characteristics. Uh, so uh, PBBM integrates all this information with uh, PK parameters as clearance, volume of distribution, half-life, uh, using, for example, PBPK modeling. Uh, it, it's possible to use compartmental uh, uh, pharmacokinetics too, uh, but uh, PBPK can help you to have more uh, information. Uh, in, in our case uh, study, uh, we used the amiodarone as a model drug. It, uh, it's an antiarrhythmic drug used as a hydrochloride uh, via intravenous and the oral roads of administration. Uh, the daily doses are between 200 and 1000 milligrams uh, initially and uh, uh, for maintenance uh, between 200 and 400 milligrams. In Brazil, uh, we have it, it's marketed uh, as solution for injection and uh, immediate release tablets, uh, 100 and 200 milligrams. Uh, Amiodarone is a BCS class two drug. It uh, has great uh, uh, variability in, in its absorption from the gastrointestinal tract uh, with a, a bioavailability between a great variation here uh, in bioavailability between 22 and 95 uh, percent. Uh, it, it has a wide distribution, uh, a high 96 percent of the drug is bound to plasma proteins and uh, it has a, a widely variable half-life, uh, about 50 days, and active metabolite. Uh, in, in Brazil, in 1999, uh, in, in Brazil, uh, we had the introduction of generic products. Uh, in the market. Uh, it led to, after uh, this, this year, uh, many advances in technologies and uh, to produce generic products uh, led to a great development of pharmaceutical companies in Brazil. It uh, occurred due to investments in equipment, professionals, and centers of studies of equivalence and bioequivalence. But now uh, we are, uh, I, I say that uh, we are living uh, a new era, uh, the use of modeling, computer modeling and simulation uh, in pharmaceutical companies, uh, which started just a few years ago, uh, about three uh, or four years ago. So. Uh, its modeling simulation is at the, the beginning uh, here in Brazil. In this way, due to the complexity of uh, factors involved in the oral absorption of the amiodarone and the beginning of the use of computer modeling and simulation uh, in Brazil, our objective was to demonstrate the use of PBPK modeling simulation using GastroPlus in the development of uh, IR tablet formulation and set solution test specification for uh, amiodarone as, as model drug. So uh, we started. Uh, with uh, the determination, determination the, the, of the solubility of the, the API. Um, uh, we use it here, the shake flask method uh, to determine the solubility of the drug in at pH 1.2, 4.5, and 6.8. 6 
uh, and we use uh, the uh, we also use the older uh, information uh, predicted from its uh, chemical structure using the ADMET predictor model in, in Gastro Plus and uh, other information from the literature and uh, some default values uh, from, from the software. Uh, so we use the uh, Gaster Plus version 90.8.1 um, and we use uh, this information as input data uh, in the software uh, for the PBPK model uh, development. Uh, the PBPK model was uh, developed uh, considering the physiology of uh, human American male uh, with a healthy status, uh, 27 years old, with 75 kilo, uh, kilograms. Uh, this physiology was the same as uh, described in the literature from where we used the IV data for this first uh, verification. Uh, IV infusion 400 milligrams, infusion time uh, 0 0.16 hours. Uh, so we uh, tried to develop the model and uh, this model was submitted to uh, two, uh, two steps of verification, then uh, it was applied uh, to oral, oral data. Uh, so here we use it uh, from uh, one publication, uh, IV administration, and the second uh, verification was uh, performed using uh, IV infusion, uh, 400 milligrams too, uh, but with a, a different infusion time. Uh, in the second verification, uh, we had to change the, the age uh, in the PK model uh, from 27 to uh, 23 years old to match the, the physiology uh, described in the, in the article. Uh, so uh, when we tried to apply the model to oral uh, data, we uh, had to include included information about uh, metabolism. So uh, we used the uh, VMAX and KM data from in vitro VMAX and KM data from this, this publication uh, about the metabolism of amiodarone from 2D6 and 3A4, uh, both in intestine and, uh, and PBPK locations. Uh, to obtain, uh, to calculate uh, using Gastro Plus, uh, the, the conversion tool, to calculate the, the in vivo uh, VMAX and KN. Uh, we also used uh, dissolution profiles and plasma concentration uh, data from uh, this publication in MAMI uh, 2010. Uh, the, the author describes the solution profiles and the correspondent plasma concentration data curves for six uh, drug products. Um, the author uh, described, uh, named the products as reference, R1, 2, and 3, and test T1, uh, T2, and T3. So, uh, we used this, this data for, for application uh, of oral administration of the, the, the model. Uh, with uh, that previous uh, information about uh, dissolution and plasma concentration time curves from, from that publication, uh, we used the IV, uh, the optional model, uh, model IVAVC plus uh, in, in Gastro plus to estimate the in vitro in vivo relationship with uh, an equation to, to be used uh, further. Uh, here we use the mechanistic absorption model in, in Gastro plus as uh, the deconvolution method. 
and um, we also uh, have uh, a solution test. Uh, was a solution test was performed for the, the reference drug product containing 200 milligrams of, of the drug using the, this method, the method described uh, in the US uh, pharmacopoeia. Uh, this experimental uh, solution profile and the uh, plasma concentration time curve for the, the same uh, drug product from the literature were used to estimate the target in vivo solution and the target uh, in vitro solution uh, profiles. Uh, so in this case, we used, we applied the VIBO fun function and uh, uh, by optimization of the, the VIBO parameters, it was possible to, to, to get the target in vivo uh, solution vivo release profile. Uh, with uh, this information was used to think about what uh, uh, was the amount of disintegrant that should be used in the, the formulation and uh, what was uh, the minimal amount of uh, amiodarone uh, that should uh, be dissolved in vitro to get uh, that uh, target in vivo uh, release profile. So uh, we prepared a, a simple formulation uh, using a hydraulic, hydraulic press. Uh, we didn't use a, a, a tablet machine. Uh, it was uh, during the pandemic, it's a little bit difficult to use the lab, uh, but it's uh, something that we are uh, thinking, thinking about uh, to try uh, other other formulations and other uh, methods uh, of preparing the, the tablets. So uh, based uh, on that information, uh, the test formulation was uh, was prepared and submitted to the solution test. Uh, it was used the, the, the same uh, solution test conditions. Uh, applied to the, the reference uh, drug product. And we used this uh, solution, uh, in vitro solution profile uh, to run, uh, to perform a crossover uh, virtual, virtual bioequivalence study using the population simulator in, in GastroPlus. Uh, we consider uh, 36 subjects uh, as sample size and 50% uh, male and, and female, uh, age between uh, 19 and 53 uh, years old, and weight between 49 and 85 uh, kilograms. Uh, Jasmine? Actually, Marcelo, it's Tanya. I'm going to jump in here oh, real quick. Oh, it's an, uh, yeah, hi. Question. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to run real quick. We're just going to pause uh, to run two polls. So I'm going to launch the first one. Are you currently using Gastro Plus? Got the results coming in. Just give it another second or two. Let me just share the results. So the majority here today are using Gastro Plus. Now I'm going to run one more poll while we're here. What features in Gastro Plus are you currently using? Please select one. And give it a couple seconds. Few more seconds, I still see some responses coming in. All right, it looks like we have all our responses. Just share these results. So we've got the majority are uh, the parameter sensitivity analysis at 29%. All right, let me hide that. 
And Marcelo, I'll turn it back to you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little bit faster. I forgot the pool <laughs> questions. Uh, so uh, we uh, returning here. We performed a virtual bioequivalence study uh, with uh, 36 subjects as sample size. Uh, when you you choose the the population simula simulator, there are other uh, parameters that you have to choose uh, if uh, uh, you are using the 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 version, uh, the new new version, uh, you can use uh, as uh, run some replicates. Uh, so uh, you you have to select the the number of output data points. Uh, here we use it uh, 100 output as, as output data points. So uh, there's uh, many, many things uh, to do uh, using the population uh, simulator. Uh, as results, we we have here the solubility results from the shake flask uh, method. Uh, Amiodarene is a lipophilic weak base drug. It's a, a low solubility drug. Uh, due to, to its weak base uh, characteristics, uh, this drug is more solubly in, in acid pH when on its ionized form and presents a uh, low solubility at uh, pH 6.8 when on its non-ionized form. Uh, so uh, this greater uh, uh, solubility uh, was found at pH eight, uh, 4 point5 uh, but the same uh, did not occur at uh, the lower pH 1 point2 uh, the 1 point2 pH was uh, obtained with a hydrochloric buffer solution and since uh, this is a drug in the form of hydrochloride the common ion effect led uh, could lead to lower solubility at this point pH. Uh, and uh, for amiodarone, uh, many pKa values are described in the literature. So uh, we use it in the software at 7.15 uh, as the pKa, uh, as the pKa uh, uh, this value was, was obtained uh, by fitting with uh, this experimental solubility uh, data. Um, there are uh, other authors that found uh, uh, similar uh, results, uh, similar solubility results, uh, higher uh, solubility at pH 4.5. Uh, so the developed uh, uh, PBPK model showed PK uh, parameters, uh, clearance, volume of distribution, uh, uh, half-life, uh, predicted uh, uh, that were according to literature data. Uh, so we had, uh, uh, you can see here that there is a, a great variability in the PK uh, values uh, that are uh, in the literature. Uh, we had uh, uh, good results in, in the first and, and second uh, verifications. Uh, you can see that in, in the second verific verification, there was a prediction error uh, higher than 15%. But uh, considering that amiodarone has a great variability in, on its volume of distribution, uh, we decided to use this model. Uh, um, another uh, another uh, thing that could be done here, we, we are uh, doing this um, these calculations. Uh, it's to use the success criteria uh, to uh, compare predicted and observed uh, values. Uh, here we have the predicted PK uh, parameters uh, uh, obtained for the oral administration of the products uh, R1, R2, and R3. Uh, so uh, they were in the range of the in vivo study. And uh, for products uh, T1, T2, 
T2, that's one, uh, T1, T2, and T3, um, they were the same uh, uh, occurred, that they are uh, within the, the, the range of the in vivo study, only the Tmax uh, here for T3 was outside. Uh, so, uh, in the, here we have the, the predicted uh, curves. Uh, a level level B correlation was obtained uh, by the author from the article where this this data were uh, extracted. Uh, so uh, we have uh, we know that uh, IV IVC is expected for BCS class uh, two drugs. Uh, however, uh, establishing a point-to-point -point correlation at a level A uh, IVAVC for amiodarone is a, is a challenge, uh, probably due to its complex pharmacokinetic with, with uh, high and variable bioavailability. So uh, we got a, a equation here. Uh, it was not a, an IVAVC, it's a IVAVR because it does not meet the criteria for uh, an IVAVC, uh, you can see here that we we have some prediction errors at the values of the prediction errors. Uh, some of them are higher than than ten and uh, fifteen. And uh, but this information, we think that uh, this information could help pharmaceutical companies uh, internally in the formulation development process and uh, to set uh, the solution uh, test specifications. So uh, here we use the experimental uh, solution profile of the, the, reference, uh, the reference product and uh, let me see here, it's, it's a, I think that this is a uh, very, very important tool in gastroplus uh, because uh, here we use it, this experimental solution profile. We applied a viable function and uh, we used uh, optimized the, the optimization model to optimize the viable parameters. Uh, to obtain a predicted in vivo uh, dissolution profile from the observed plasma concentration time curve of the reference product obtained from the literature. So uh, you uh, here in, in, in blue, uh, we have the, the blue line here, that is the predicted plasma concentration time curve. Uh, the squares uh, in blue here are the observed plasma uh, concentration time curve. Uh, we have here in, in light blue the amount into the enterocytes, uh, in purple the amount into portal vein, and uh, in green the amount into the systemic circulation. So when you apply the, the viral function and uh, you can uh, deconvolute this uh, plasma concentration time curve and obtain the in vivo solution that is the, the red curve here uh, that corresponds to this uh, PK profile. Uh, so uh, when we extract uh, this in vivo dissolution uh, from, from the, the graph, uh, use the IV IVR equation and plot the graphs. We have the target in vivo solution here and the target uh, in vitro solution. Uh, this is um, uh, this in vitro uh, solution profile is only a representation. Of course, this uh, precipitation here does not happen. In, uh, when you run a, a solution test in your equipment. So uh, it's only to represent what uh, uh, we want to know about the in vitro solution uh, related to this uh, in vivo solution uh, of the drug. So 
uh, based on this, this graph, uh, we found that the IR tablets should present a minimum of 78% of drug dissolved in 10 minutes in uh, the in vitro solution uh, profile. So, uh, in this way, we use it, uh, and, and so we, we use it this uh this this number as our uh solution test specification uh and uh we use the an amount of disintegrant in the the formulation to have a fast disintegration uh here we have the solution uh, experimental solution profile of the reference product here and the test uh formulation here uh, we had 79% uh, of drug dissolved in five minutes in the uh, using the, the test formulation. Uh, so in, in five minutes, we already had uh, passed our, our specification, and in 10 minutes, 90, uh, 92% of uh, drug dissolved. I thought uh, it was used uh, one liter of sodium lauryl sulfate one percent solution as solution media. Uh, you know, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate can solve uh, anything. Uh, the method was able to show difference between uh, the two formulations between the two uh, solution profiles. So uh, the IV-IVR equation was then applied to the in vitro uh, solution profiles, to uh, these two uh, in vitro solution profiles, to, um, to calculate the in vivo release. Uh, so we, we got the CRD files uh, from uh, each formulation. Uh, which were submitted to a virtual uh, bioequivalence study, and uh, it uh, indicates that they would be bioequivalent. Uh, so we have here the test formulation in pink and in green the, the reference uh, formulation. Uh, it's only a preliminary study. Uh, we are uh, planning to test other amounts uh, of uh, to continue this this project this work, uh, we are planning to test uh, other amounts of disintegrant and the run uh, replicates of the virtual bioequivalence study. So uh, for a, a preliminary, preliminary study, uh, I think it's, uh, it's okay. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we see that the simulations uh, obtained uh, allowed us a better understanding of the absorption of the drug and the performance of formulation with uh, different solution profile, profiles. Uh, it was also possible to apply PBPK modeling and simulation to support the development of uh, this IR tablet formulation and to set a relevant solution test specification. Uh, and our thoughts with uh, different uh, key percent, 10 minutes uh, values, the reference and test product showed it to be bioequivalent when running a virtual bioequivalence study. And uh, less variability was observed for the test product in the virtual bioequivalence studies, indicating that the faster uh, solution at the beginning uh, may have some influence on this process. It's uh, something that we want to, to test a little bit more uh, with uh, formulations with different, uh, containing different amounts of disintegrant. So uh, our idea here were, uh, was uh, more than getting a, a perfect product or solution test specification, but uh, it was uh, show the application of PBPK modeling and simulation for uh, this uh, purpose. So I would like uh, again to, to thank again Simulations Plus for uh, providing the software for the invitation, uh, the opportunity uh, for this, this webinar. 
uh, the graduate program in pharmaceutical science of uh, the Federal University of Sao Paulo. I, I also would like to thank you, Juliana, Juliani, uh, for your dedication to this project. Uh, it was her uh, her master's degree uh, project. So, Juliani, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Eduardo, Newton, Leticia, and Michele for the opportunity to work together. And thank you for your time and attention. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Uh, we see that we've got quite a few questions here in the questions, so I'll turn it over to Daniela and Dan, who can address these questions. And Marcelo, we've got quite a few, it looks like, for you as well. Sorry. Thank you, yeah. Thank okay. you, Marcella, for uh, for this insightful presentation. So um, the first question for generic immediate release formulations: How to perform an uh, in vitro in vivo relationship or IVIVR for IR product using GastroPlus, where the dissolution is of around 30 minutes, while the in vivo profile is of 72 hours? Well, uh, it's uh, sort of the in vitro solution is 30 minutes and? Exactly, and the in vivo profile is 72 okay. hours. Uh, okay, when, when you uh, use the mechanistic absorption, so you have to, to build uh, the, the a model, a PBK, PBK model in GastroPlus, and uh, uh, you have to use the IVIVC Plus uh, model, and then uh, in using IVIVC Plus, you should use the mechanistic absorption, uh, mechanistic absorption as the deconv deconvolution method. Uh, using this uh, mechanistic deconvolution method, uh, GastroPlus will uh, calculate the, the in vivo solution around the, the, all, all the, the time, uh, not only for 30 minutes. Wonderful, okay, thank you. Um, regarding the age uh, of 23 years old, can you uh, explain on which basis that age was selected? Yes, uh, the, that age uh, was uh, in the first case, the, the first uh, uh, verification step, uh, we used uh, um, 27 years old uh, because uh, in the, the, the article that we used uh, uh, where we extracted the, from where we extracted the, the IV uh, data, uh, the in vivo uh, experiment with, uh, with individuals, uh, subjects with uh, average uh, age of 27 years old. So in, in the second verification, the average uh, age of the subjects was uh, 23 years old. So we uh, just changed the, the age uh, to match the, the, in vivo, uh, the in vivo experiment. Wonderful, thank you. Um, now regarding the dissolution test, so how critical is the dissolution test data for the PVPK application? Does the dissolution test have to be discriminating, a discriminating test, or the USP or FDA recommended test method is good enough? Well, I, from my, my, my experience, I, I see that uh, it's better to use a discriminating method. Uh, I see that sometimes people uh, use uh, a solution method and uh, the apply this solution method to the uh, test product and the reference product and uh, the, the solution profiles are equivalent. So, uh, they go to GastroPlus and they try to perform some simulations using these solution profiles. And uh, 
so they they are uh, thinking that the in vitro solution is the same as uh, sorry the in vivo solution is the same as the in vitro solution, and uh, it does not happen um, all the time. Uh, so uh, I, I think I I, I suggest uh, to use a discriminating uh, solution method. So uh, because uh, you can have a virtual uh, uh, a positive, uh, uh, it can pass on the virtual bioequivalence study. Uh, and uh, when you uh, uh, do, uh, do a, a, a bioequivalent, a real bioequivalence study, the product can uh, cannot pass. So uh, I, I suggest uh, use a discriminating uh, dissolution method. It's, it's very, it's very. Thank you. Um, regarding the sample size uh, for the population simulation, uh, you use 36 subjects, but sometimes you see that uh, it's usually 24 is usually used. Uh, is there any reason why you use 36? Uh, I used uh, 36 because uh, it was the, the same uh, number of subjects of the, the in vivo study uh, from where we extracted the, the plasma uh, concentration time curve for the oral administration. Uh, this uh, was the only reason for the, uh, the 36 subjects. And uh, uh, I sh also showed uh, uh, the, the uh, range of, of age and the weight uh, that we uh, used in, in the population simulator that was the, the same uh, uh, the same uh, range that was used in the in vivo study. Wonderful. Okay. Um, you you have mentioned that uh, emetorons has a, a high in vivo variability. So, is there any criterion to choose uh, which lit literature data to use specifically for the enzymes and um, things that yield to that greater variability? Uh, yes, uh, I think that this this great this uh, high variability uh, it's uh, due to the the metabolism. So uh, we had uh, uh, some lucky. Uh, we we found uh, uh, an article that uh, had the Vmax and, and Km values in vitro. Uh, Vmax and Km values for uh, amiodarone for uh, the uh, two, for two D six and three four, uh, but so, uh, sometimes we, we don't find this this data. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we, we have some lucky uh, uh, finding this this article uh, that helped us, but uh, many times uh, we have to optimize that uh, that values. You use the, that in vitro values, uh, and uh, uh, in gastro plus uh, use uh, the uh, conversion tool to uh, obtain the in vivo uh, Vmax and Km values and see it, if it works uh, well. Marcelo, this is Dan. I, I just wanted to follow on with a question that's a little less technical, but both a compliment and a uh, comment uh, regarding the research in PBBK in the Brazilian area. Specifically, one of your colleagues from Brazil mentioned that these kinds of uh, research and results are very important for gaining the attention and interest of your local health authority, uh, health authority I guess, in Visa. Uh, so can you just comment a little bit about early days in Brazil and how you hope to be able to expand the understanding there? Yes, uh, I, 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 I can't say, uh, I, I don't know. What I say is that uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, we are in the beginning here in Brazil uh, about using this uh, uh, technology uh, like uh, GastroPlus, but uh, I know that the, the Asians is is very open to uh, to talk about it and 
uh, to evaluate. Uh, I, I can't say in the name of uh, Anvisa, but I, I know that they are very open to 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 talk about it, to to see uh, results, to discuss uh, results. Uh, so I I imagine that. Um, in, in some years, in a few years, uh, uh, we, we're going to have guidelines here, and um, um, it, it's it's a, a technology that came to 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 stay, and uh, 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 the healthy agency uh, and pharmaceutical companies will adapt to to that. And we we are gonna have. Uh, I expected that we're gonna have many many submissions to the agents uh, using modeling and simulation. Daniela, uh, thank you. Um, one question about um, uh, sorry about about the the reference and test uh, dissolution profile so could the space between the reference and test dissolution in in slide 21 specifically be named as a safe space uh, let me come back to the slide uh, 21 uh sorry daniela can you uh Sure. Uh, um, so could the space between the reference and test dissolution be, na be named as a safe space? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think uh, we could better uh, name this space uh, here as a safe space uh, if we test more, uh, more solution profiles. I, I think it's uh, it's better uh, to test more solution profiles uh, with uh, uh, slowed solution uh, here uh, about here and uh, uh, faster solution than this test formulation uh, to say uh, to name it, uh, this as a, a safe space. Okay, thank you. Um, now, still regarding the dissolution, uh, did you examine a z-factor modeling approach for the differences in dissolution between the formulations? No, uh, we used the, the we didn't use the z-factor. We used the, the CR. Uh, let me remember. I think that CR uh, integral tablet or dispersed. I, I don't remember now. But we didn't use z-factor. Uh, so uh, when you we use a Z factor, uh, it's it's very interesting. Uh, but Z factor considers that in the model uh, that uh, all the drug is available for uh, disintegration, and uh, sometimes uh, maybe here it could be uh, uh, very good. But uh, sometimes if you have a, a, a um, some uh, higher uh, disintegration time, uh, it's, it does not apply very well. But I think it's, uh, it would be a very, very good uh, solution model to, to be used here. But uh, in this case, we used uh, another, we used CR, uh, another uh, CR, I don't remember if CR dispersed or integral tablet, uh, but uh, Z factor would be used here. Okay. Um... And I guess uh, one last question because we're running out of time. Um, did you? Uh, so can you comment a little bit how you validated the model? Yes, uh, the model uh, was uh, subjected to uh, two steps of verification. Uh, we can say validation or verification. Uh, I named here verification, uh, two steps of verification using IV data from different uh, uh, publications and uh, using uh, oral data from uh, another uh, publication uh, here, AMAMI 2010. And uh, this uh, here, uh, let me find here, uh, this um, 
in vivo, in vivo uh, this plasma concentration here, this observed data, the squares, are uh, from another uh, publication. So uh, we we didn't have uh, so uh, like a one like one two and about uh, three steps of uh, verification validation uh, of the the model. Wonderful. Um... Thank you, thank you, Marcelo, for uh, for this uh, presentation and also for addressing the questions. We still have a lot of questions, but due to time, we'll um, finish the questions here. And I wanted to add a comment about our University Plus uh, um, program for qualified universities. That, as we as we saw here, this was actually uh, um, a work done by a graduate student and. Um, as a postdoc, someone that just came out of university, I, I can definitely say that this is a great way uh, to incorporate more of the biopharmaceutical aspects to your research and to have more in-depth mechanistic understanding of what's going on, not only in an in vitro dissolution setting, but also uh, in vivo and setting up uh, specifications. And additionally, also as Dan um, read a comment about uh, uh, folks in Brazil, how this is also important for uh, for health agencies and how this is becoming more and more acceptable. So Dan and Tanya, I don't know if you guys have any anything else to add. It goes back to Tanya for a close, Tanya. Oh. All right, well, thank you, Daniela, for moderating that, and Dan and Marcelo. Um, we just invite our audience to learn more about GastroPlus on our website at www.simulations-plus.com. Um, you can also find information about our University Plus program there. And you can see our team next year at our annual virtual conference, MIDD Plus 2022. The registration is now open on our website. Uh, this webinar has been recorded for playback and will be available on our website and YouTube channel. And for those questions that we did not get to today, we will post the answers um, on our Gastro Plus LinkedIn page. So this concludes our webinar for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks.